Hey folks, it's Cal, and uh, I am installing a booster plug today. So, uh, booster plug. I can wax on about the booster plug, but the booster plug is essentially a device which slightly richens up the fuel mixture to avoid throttle snatchiness and give you a bit of a cleaner power delivery <coughs> and throttle feel. It won't necessarily increase your power, uh, and it'll also stop the massive um, pops and bangs I get on this arrow, uh, which are just insane, like it is a lot of pops and bangs. I, I like them, but they're a bit excessive. Anyway, installation on the K, obviously I've got the tank off and all the plastics. Uh, those are a separate video. But basically, what this is, is a two pin connector which interfaces and takes the signal from the uh, intake air temperature sensor in the air box, which luckily for us is right here. It is a two pin wire, as you'll notice these are two pin connectors. Uh, and that lets you see, uh, sorry, that lets you intercept the signal coming from the intake air temperature sensor. It then compares that to the its own air temperature sensor reading, uh, which we will zip tie to the intake somewhere over here. So we have a similar reading to what's coming into the bike, as opposed to down here, which would be super hot and not a very smart idea. And then what it does is, for a, uh, look, I don't know, there's going to be a chip in there of some kind, I'm assuming. Uh, there'll be a 5 volt reference signal coming from the ECU and a return signal coming back uh, But basically I'm assuming this is actually powered Okay time to jump into how this actually works So this is the booster plug website and the how it works page that goes into some excellent detail about exactly what is happening so the question I asked in the video just shown before was, is there a chip inside the device? And the answer is no. So we have to scroll down a bit um, to where he starts talking about resistor tuning. And what he shows here is uh, if you uh, offset the intake air temperature, he calls it AIT, I call it IAT. Uh, let me just actually show you what I mean. Here, so if he says if you alter the intake air temperature, then the reading uh, correction. If you alter the resistance of the uh, sensor, then the temperature changes. But you you can't just put a static resistor in. So you can see that the original air intake resistor here uh, in the air box is adjustable. It's a negative temperature coefficient. So as the temperature changes, the resistance changes. And then in this simple example, a fixed resistor is added into the circuit to offset the behavior. But uh, if you do that, it now gets a bit weird. So he says, um, you know, uh, if I just uh, do this again here, he says, you know, if you add the extra resistance, it will think of the temperatures change and it will actually richen up the uh, fuel mixture. However, um, he says, but it needs some development. And so the problem is that because of the non-linear non resistance curve of the stock sensor, uh, everything goes a bit uh, wacky. So uh, you just can't put a static resistor in and, and hope for the best. So he realized that was an, that was an issue. Um, the graph in the chart below shows the poor performance of the serial resistor. And so basically... It wasn't, it was too much of a curve in the way it changes the offset, right? He wants it to be 6% um, 6 richer across the entire range, but because of the way the sensors work, it ended up being um, way more. So you can see he's got none to 6%, 8%, 10 12 You don't want that. He wants a nice, we all want a nice flat 6% added across the curve. So... He says, hang on, I'm getting at it now. Uh, and that's an important um, section of this page, right? If you're looking at this website, um, then you want to look for the hang on, I'm getting at it now section. So he realized that by having another NTC resistor in, 
in either serial or parallel with a few fixed resistors. It basically allowed him with an analog system, which is not even powered, just using a bunch of resistors and his own NTC resistor in that end of that cable on the booster plug to have a very, very uh, consistent um, alteration. So this is it. This is where he said he was really proud of it. If we look at this table, he says, uh, if the ambient temp is uh, 25, it's going to reduce the reading by 19. So we've got 17, 18, 19, 19, 19. These are really close, by the way. 20, 20, 20, 20, 19, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 25. And then when he gets above 45 degrees, it gets a bit wacky, but that's rare, unless you live in Australia, I suppose, but it is rare. So he's got he's done really well with this very, very simple um, um, analog device. And here's the actual chart of the performance of how linear it is, uh, except as it gets uh, quite hot. But as he says, on really, really hot days, the additional rich uh, rich mixture um, will actually give you uh, somewhat of a cooling effect to the air charge. This is true. Rich mixtures uh, uh, cool the charge and reduce the risk of knock or detonation. Uh, essentially, a simple statement would be a booster plug would be very handy for a turbocharged car. So you would be even less likely to have knock. Uh, knock on a boosted engine is really bad. It can destroy engines rapidly. And as he says here at the bottom, uh, this is as good as it gets with the use of passive, i.e. no CPU, no microcontroller components. And it's quite good actually. I do tend to agree. Um, it could be slightly cheaper, uh, but it's a small business and he has to turn over a profit. So I'm happy with the price I paid. So yeah, let's uh, get it installed. Just got to get the, you see these are like a retaining pin on here. We gotta pop that out and pull that down. Uh, so I need a flat bladed screwdriver, I imagine. Yep, I can see that. Uh, let's have a look at the booster plug to see. Oh yeah. Oh, maybe I push it in. Oh, it's not a pop out, it's a push in. Uh, I might have just fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, it's a push in, not a pop out. I'm actually used to some Mitsubishi car stuff where you uh, pop them out. So... Let's leave that guy dangling maybe to the left hand side of this solenoid down here. Get the booster plug connected. It's a little tight, but not too bad. Now, Okay, so you want to come back behind those tubes in case something's going to touch it on this side. Plug that in. Yep, so that's setting neat and tidy. I might zip tie this. And booster plug's going to get fairly warm in there. Uh, mind you, the exhaust's on the other side, so it shouldn't be too bad. Before we do anything else, let's make sure it starts. So, let's, I do have, uh, oh, you know what I can do? Oh, you know what I can do? I have a GS911. I can show you the before and after intake air temperature readings. Mm-hmm. Let's do let's first of all make sure there's no errors. No errors, let's start it. Uh it is in neutral. Oh, that was interesting. Oh, there's no fuel tank. <laughs> That's pretty stupid, Ed. Um yeah, no errors at all, considering the fuel tank's not connected. Mm -hmm. oh, 
I'll be back once my brain's back in gear. Okay, so we're on the GS911 on my Wi-Fi, which is really great. Uh, select vehicle, K-series, it's one of these, it's a K300R. Difference from selected vehicle? Oh, whoop. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, let's see, engine controller, uh, real-time values. Okay, I got it. It says the air temperature is 5.3 degrees Celsius. Let's uh, hold this thing in my hand. The sensor. Oh, look, it's going up. So that would make it run richer. It is definitely not 6.8 degrees Celsius. Let's unplug that and see what the reading is. All right, folks, are you ready for this? Here's the temperature with the booster plug disconnected. 27 degrees, which it literally is. It's literally 27 degrees here. Wow. Uh, okay. Look, okay, after recording this, I realized after investigating how the booster plug actually works, that this is just all waffle. And yes, the temperature difference is correct for it to provide a 6% increase in the fuel mixture. And there's a bunch of maths behind that as well, and they all work out. Rightio, so I've installed it, as you can see. That's where the original connector goes. That's the booster plug, the actual uh, connector. The booster plug itself is just hanging down in here. Um, the only mechanism that's actually that is moving. Uh, I'm going to have to tie that off because the booster plug's getting knocked about by the actual throttle linkage there. That would have been embarrassing if I jammed my throttle open on wide open. It. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, the actual. Uh, sensor wire and up underneath and around the back here and just zip tied it to close to where the air intake is there'll be a lot of ambient air here so it'll be similar to the intake air that should be good uh, let me go and fix this let me zip tie it somewhere okay everything's plugged back in fuel reconnect look for errors whoa uh, yeah. I, I could say it smells a little richer. degrees let's look at the yeah see this additive trim bank this additive trim bank used to be like one percent when it was idling now it's 0 0.3 because it's already getting a rich mixture so it's definitely running richer but it's not adding as much fuel I guess now the only thing to do is ride it. Okay, so I gotta say it's pretty good. I sped up all this and um, I was backing on the throttle and off and giving it a very slight tug and then letting it sort of slap shut and then grabbing the throttle again. No snatchiness at all. There wasn't very much on the K1300 anyway. There was the occasional snatch, but it is absolutely and utterly completely gone. I have to say, I think the booster plug is well worth the money. Enjoy.